So yesterday there was an article in Hindu regarding the caste census in Bihar. So someone asked me whether, you know, politically biased articles or one-sided articles, how do we handle them? How to, how to just basically understand what is happening? What are the takeaways, right? So as I keep reminding the students, you are writing a government exam. You are supposed to work in the government and as a bureaucrat, you are supposed to be politically neutral. That is the first quality of a bureaucrat, political neutrality. Even the Weberian bureaucracy says so, the practicing bureaucracy says the same thing, right? And you should be biased towards the constitution of India, not towards political parties. Very simple. Your, your alliances are, uh, your loyalty should be to the people, not to the political masters. So, whenever you feel there is a biasness in the article, left, right, center or whatever bias is there, okay, draw a arc of constitution. That means like an umbrella, okay. So, whatever this article is saying, whatever the good stuff is there, based on what facts and opinions, if it is under the constitution and it makes sense, rationality, okay, you take that. Rest all are hardline opinions which are extremes. Extremes have to be discarded. Extremes have to be discarded. Where do you stay? Preferable in the middle path. But at the same time, there is a difference between timidity and middle path. Why? You are afraid. That is why you are in the middle path. That should not be the case. When wrong is wrong, you have to have the courage to say wrong. Saying wrong is not extreme. Saying right is the right thing to do. I hope you understand. Okay. So considering that, what do you do? For example, this article talks about caste versus religion, right? He begins by saying, in India, there are two major dynamics. One dynamic is caste. The other one is religion. So, there are Supreme Court judgments. There are uh, limitations, model code of conduct. Everything is there, which clearly says, people should not ask votes directly in the name of caste or religion. I cannot directly ask people to vote me because I belong to Hinduism or whatever. Okay, that is wrong. But at the same time in India, can you actually separate a person from religion and his caste? See, what is the purpose of caste? What is the purpose of religion in India? If you think about it, okay, we are all social animals. We want to belong to something, somebody. Yes or no? You cannot be an outlier. See, there is a difference between outlier and outcast. Outcast means mad, boycotting you from the caste. That means if something happens to you, there is no solidarity. In India, majority of the people still rely on whom? The social networks. Yes or no? I hope you understand. It is your social status. The social network, the social political capital that you have determines who you are. Right? So, that is why caste is very powerful. The moment you are identified to something, okay, people don't ask you what is your education qualification. When you go to new places, what do they ask you? What is your caste? What is your religion? Do you eat vegetarian food or non-vegetarian food? These are more important than what is your grade in engineering? How many supplies did you write? Nobody is bothered about these things. So, we, 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 uh, we are a country which works on social networks. Okay, our belonging to something or some, but some group determines your fate in the life. So that is why caste is a very powerful determinant. Okay, next, especially when it comes to the weaker sections or vulnerable section, caste acts as a solidarity tool. Okay, that means some atrocity happened. Okay, normally when is the last time you have seen a Brahmin boy has been beaten in the school for drinking water from a pot? That is something we don't see. But what are the headlines you see? A Dalit boy has been beaten. Yes or no? Why, why that? It's not about who is powerful, who is weak. It's a societal perception. Okay? Why do they add the word, this particular community kid has been beaten or a Muslim has been beaten? Why, why that uh, uh, extra addition to that word? It acts as a solidarity tool. Yes or no? As I said, if a woman was harassed, okay, a young woman has been harassed and all the women all over the country can sympathize with her. Yes or no? But when you attach a social term like caste, Hindu, Muslim, Christian or somebody, Dalit has been beaten, a tribal has been beaten, that creates a sense of solidarity among the 
people they can collectively fight that atrocities yes or no so like this there is advantage of the caste system at the same time what is the disadvantage of the caste system it can be converted into vote bank politics so uh, there is a debate in india called as mandal versus mandir debate mandal versus mandir debate in 1990s it is a very popular term what is that the mandir here is ram mandir mandal here is reservation the obc reservation especially in bihar and uttar pradesh other places caste based political parties like samajwad party has been created okay they have a very strong hold mayawati has become cm and all those things okay that means either you vote on the basis of religion ram mandir means what either you vote on the basis of hinduism or hindutva or you vote on the basis of your caste that is obc see uh, there is a huge groups right yadav baniya uh, uh, yadav brahmin uh, you know one other group all these groups come together and they form uh, you know voting block in uttar pradesh okay so even today yadavs that is the obc group actually decides the lot of weightage in some states okay i hope you understand that is the crux of this article so don't look at it political frame look at it as a practical frame in india yes caste actually plays a huge role in your win or lose bjp the present government has nicely used the other angle that is the religion angle yes or no the hindutva feeling has been evoked because bjp is taking away the religion angle what the other opposition parties have tried to do caste. they try to bring the caste angle but caste angle if directly being brought it would have been a repressive step regressive step they didn't bring a caste they brought caste census why again for upliftment of caste anyhow you are bringing what caste only but now you are bringing caste plus vikas yes or no caste for what development earlier caste was invoked only for consolidation okay at least there is some change no okay so that is the crux of this article mandir versus mandal debate mandal here is mandal commission which gave the obc reservation and all those things mandir here is ram mandir now that ram mandir has been constructed again i cannot go and ask people to vote me because i will construct mandir i mean here doing that yes or no yes again i can't ask people just to vote because i am in obc that those days are gone end of the day every person in india needs what development only mandir cannot lead to development we need mandir but also we need what development people are not celebrating modi for his temple development his he, that is a good thing but he is develop he celebrated more for vande bharat he celebrated more for capital budget not only for mandir yes so caste politics will also survive only when what is added development is added clear now how do you draw a line sir as a beginner how will i know how, where to draw a line as long as it is fact based that means did is bjp a government that promotes religion or uses religion definitely they they appeal to hindus more yes or no sir that is a very open statement no that is a fact okay they are not breaking any law they are asking in solidarity that we are with hindus okay they are not directly saying if you are a hindu vote for me that will be a different thing okay now just before elections you can also see almost all political parties major leaders will be visiting temples temple temple run will be happening is or no whether it's rajasthan or mr rahul gandhi everybody visit will be visiting temples so what i'm trying to say is religion is a part and parcel of identity in india okay your religion and caste will also decide whether people will vote for you or not okay hmm next one more thing one more take away from this article is symbolic capital what is symbolic capital symbolic capital is my ability to influence things or make people perceive okay that is a very good word uh, that you can pick up symbolic capital shape the perception of social reality yes or no again if you go to villages okay so in either in north india or south india brahmins or priests have a aura they have a special reverence or perception why 
are brahmins or the upper caste community they are like this zamindars are like this people have a perception how did you shape that perception either because of social power political power or cultural influence yes or no but what the author argues is in a deeply fragmented and underprivileged obcs very few people actually possess the power to social cultural and ideological resources because they don't have the power to influence the perception okay they have to depend on other policies especially the caste politics clear okay so let's not spend too much time on this but you understood the basic mandal versus mandir the what is the meaning of the term right that is more important okay. right <clears throat> we'll start with the original sin now again as i said not only in india wherever whichever country you go religion plays a huge role so the jews christians islam and all these things have are called as abrahamic religions they have a history of their own uh, who killed whom all of you know the history right so, so there is animosity between the religions now the basic summary here is okay right now whatever is happening in israel also has some religious connotation yesterday we have mentioned this point but is it only religion it is also human greed power other aspects okay now what hindu article is adding is okay first of all we have to accept that there is a blockade on palestinians let us de alienate the terms palestinians are group of people within palestinians there is a group which is very violent which is radical which believes in uh, you know as he was mentioning destroying the israel and all these things what is that group called as hamas, hamas. okay just like india is different from naxals okay palestinians are different from hamas but naxals are also indians hamas are also palestinians this part is clear on the left hand side we have gaza strip on the right hand side we have west bank west bank is controlled or dominated by palestinian authority that is abbas and all those people okay whereas gaza strip is dominated by hamas okay hamas was legitimately a political party they won once they won they have become very radical they always had this tinge they are no saints from beginning but because of the pent up frustration people of the gaza strip were very frustrated so they gave support to whom hamas just like the frustrated villagers of telangana chatisgarh jharkhand gave support to naxals in the beginning days okay the frustration of the people of palestine that is the gaza strip led to rise to hamas okay now palestinians are divided into two areas one is gaza strip the other one is west bank within the entire palestinians group now who is our protector who is fighting for palestine on one hand hamas will says i am the protector why i am still fighting i am dying for you on the other hand side we also have palestinian authority then there is one more lions den islamic republic there are so many sub small small groups also so everybody says i am your protector for who palestinians so palestinians are generally innocent within them there are a group of people who who take violent path and who take peaceful path for example the west bank palestinian authority is there palestinian authority and israel government are more or less hand in gloves okay they are talking to each other and they are saying we will give you peace one day aha they will give peace one day so this this drama is happening in west bank because of lack of time patience and all these things hamas has taken a very radical step okay now once and for all we will settle the debate the the hamas is a terrorist group okay for all the right reasons they have done the wrong things so there is no justification of what the atrocities have been done by them right so hamas is according to hindu a non state actor so hamas is no longer even a legitimate group that means one day hamas and israel government will sit together and they will say okay let's have palestine and israel separately that won't happen why i will not talk to naxalites i will only talk to elected governments who is that elected government probably palestine authority probably again i'm just saying 
got my point so hamas is what a non state actor state actors means people who are officially recognized okay that that much is clear next what is the response of israel to gaza right gaza has been closed in its entirety there is no water there is no gas there is no food it has been totally closed so because of this how many people are suffering 2 million people are suffering where in gaza strip okay israel people are also suffering they are also having death mourning and all those things because of the actions of few hamas that is few people within palestine entire gaza strip is being now punished very severely this will lead to what humanitarian crisis let's imagine a 6 month old baby is there okay he or she is crying in gaza strip okay what crime did she or he do to deserve this she needs milk or something but the milk is not available okay i'm not blaming any one country or any one individual i'm just asking a moral question who is to be blamed is it the mistake of the kid to be born in gaza strip just by being born in gaza strip you have committed a mistake right mute all bet nade right my screen is off screen off unda nade hmm okay fine yes are we clear so far so this 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 has to go away this has to be solved okay right so the life of the gazans or the west bank area is only going to get tougher and tougher this will lead to what only two outcome should come either they should like you know destroy hamas once and for all and occupy gaza strip also that is called as annexation who is who is annexing what israel. israel is annexing palestine not gaza strip israel is annexing Palestine and the ramifications are what? What will happen if I annex another country? According to international law, I have occupied a different country. Just like Russia is trying to occupy Ukraine, which is a crime. Okay, Israel has committed a war crime. Okay, and whoever innocent dies in the process is also on the burden of Israel. That is point number one. Second thing, all Islamic countries now cannot again talk to Israel. Why? who has done wrong to you uh, muslims islam the jews you, you understand the complexity right so this entire drama will go on forever and ever unless big players like india russia usa all of them come suddenly stop intervene bring everybody to table saudi arabia and there is one uh, uh, radical element in this entire group that is iran who is happily celebrating why is iran celebrating according to some experts Iran has happily funded the Hamas. Hamas have destroyed them, Israel territories. Now, who are not going to talk? Israel and Saudi Arabia are not going to talk to each other. Who is happy? Iran is happy. Who died? Innocent Israelis. Some innocent Palestinians. Both of them have died. Who is happy? Iran is happy. This is geopolitical proxy warfare. I hope you understand. These things should not. happen okay now we'll we'll look at one more uh, nice article okay this is by mr vinay sitapati okay he also talks see these are these kind of articles are compassionate articles what are compassionate articles compassionate articles are like 
you know they actually understand the problem what they are trying to tell he he raises a very nice question <coughs> by saying the answer is always known what is the answer to the israel palestine problem two state theory who which two states israel and palestine but the his 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 logical extension is who should come to census with that statement okay who should make peace with that imagine israel i am a israeli okay i want to live happily every day i don't like this drama i, I hope you know there is something called as iron dome there is a missile system on the border of israel palestine the gaza strip and other areas what happens is whenever somebody launches a rocket shoulder rocket and all those motor rockets okay immediately missiles from israel side will rise into the air and they will intercept them in the air such system is called as iron dome iron dome is very powerful okay uh, thousands of rockets are launched in minutes from the palestinian side that is the gaza strip okay still almost all the rockets are intercepted by iron dome do i really need to live under such a dome do i see what if one missile escapes that means every day i am living very risky life do i really need such a life this can be a question of whom israeli people okay then they will say are chalo live and let live what is live and let live i am giving you official status that gaza strip is palestine west bank is palestine okay will it stop there what do you need today freedom peace uh, you know your, your ability to do international relations or whatever you are free palestine has officially free to do whatever it wants to do okay but what guarantees do i have that tomorrow you don't acquire new missiles from some terrorist group and attack me because of what my forefathers have done to you just like the kashmir terrorist issue right okay partition happened in 1947 why are some people being radicalized in 2023 past historical injustices yes or no i hope you understand the logic that means any unemployed person can be radicalized and i can convert him into a terrorist and now what he is officially having access to international sources see now gaza strip cannot have access to the world tomorrow what will happen if uh, if i officially recognize gaza strip as palestine i should open up the borders they can come and go freely they can do business with anybody they want will they use that freedom for peace and development or will they use it to destroy me what is the chances 50 50 i don't know no huh? unless i give that freedom i don't know is it a freedom that i'm willing to give you do i really have to take that risk in the mind of israeli people it's very easy to annex west bank and gaza what did sri lanka do did sri lanka try to negotiate with ltte yes sri lanka had uh, offered peace to ltte prabhakar and all these things one fine day they road rolled everybody they killed thousands of innocent civilians also still they went all the way till uh, the jaffna and they killed all the ltte groups okay so now sri lanka doesn't have a terrorist problem what if the same thought occurs to israeli people and presently the people who are in power in israel okay they officially claim are why are we talking to them why can't we just send the bulldozer in literal sense yes or no destroy all the buildings happily occupy whatever is remaining everything will be israel forget about two states theory and israel can actually do that and get away why best friend usa is backing israel okay so his his simple question is this very nicely argued hmm there is one line he uses hmm yesterday i told you right jews are the people who faced the persecution in spite of this you are dominating the arabs that is the palestinians okay that is a moral shame who is bearing the moral shame israelis what is moral shame 
अरे वाट हैपन टू यू वाई आर यू डूइंग इट टू अदर्स दट इज मोरल शेमिंग नो यू फेस इट द बर्डन ऑफ बींग अप्रेस्ड नो वाई आर यू अप्रेसिंग somebody else that versus risk of creating a sovereign palestine which might wipe out the jewish state okay so this is a moral burden that the israeli generations are facing and he simply concludes by saying okay people think the red color line you know if you force the israelis enough they might actually believe that the immorality of occupying immorality of occupying another people will be preferable to the risk of annihilation of one's own people what does that line mean others will criticize that israel is immoral it's okay at least i am alive if i go for morals and all these things and allow the palestine to be created there is no guarantee that my people will survive, survive. this is unfortunate grassroot level reality at the israel palestine border nobody is ready to trust the other party palestinians are not ready to trust the israelis israelis are not ready to trust the palestinians so what should we do we should watch india nepal match in the next weekend happily sleep that is not our burden okay but what is the right thing to do to create trust there is some body called as un un peace keeping force lot of things can be done if there is a global will if there is a global will some solution can be arrived but is there a global will no the answer is clear see we are a generation of human beings who designed crisp cas9 yes or no which can create a gene editing tool to create designer babies we are planning to send people to mars to terraform mars and we are also the race the epitome of human civilization which is using neural links uh, to control computers yes or no we are putting chips inside the brain so that we can control what the computers without touching them we are advancing in science in such a way and at moral level we are stagnant actually we have become rotten okay the problem is not lack of solutions the problem is will to implement the solutions nobody cares what happens in some middle eastern country to group of people if this is america russia japan india nepal or some other country not nepal probably some other country the world would have been shatters now if if the same incident happened in europe uh, sky would have fallen down now yes or no that is a problem clear okay so just understand the israel palestine issue has lot of connotations okay we'll first come to the mental health issues because that is a very important day today what is the day today is the world mental health day yes we know mental we have health what is mental health mental health is psychological who told you world health organization so i didn't ask what is health i asked what is mental health you must have heard that term so many times right what is mental health no stress is mental health according to society <laughs> hmm how the way people are thinking if you also think that is mental health <laughs> okay by the way what about yesterday's homework what is yesterday's homework you have to read that article try to find out the points related to causes impacts and steps to be taken for what glacial lake outburst what did you find anything new
What? Hmm. Warning, early warning systems. Okay. What else? Through satellite navigation, what can we do? I think we have all those systems, no? That is what Hindu argues. Hmm. Okay. So if a question comes six months down the line, will you be able to at least fill the paper based on that article? Something, some stuff? Sure. Huh? Okay. That's, that's the only thing. Hmm. And the, the topic is same, no one topic only, no other topic has been given. So you people have done the basic work? Okay, fine. Now, now coming to mental health. See, uh, it's not a homogeneous term, right? Like it's not one thing. Mental health has so much wider connotation. It's, it's, it's about quality of your life. Yes or no? Mental health is also about quality of your life. So, see, in, in, in simple terms, uh, you know, any human being who is not having any uh, problems because of his overall quality of life can be considered a, can can be considered to be in a mental healthy state, right? But that is very difficult in present day's world. Either you have work pressure, peer pressure, societal expectations, or uh, Thanks to social media and all these things, even you, you can develop something like insomnia or uh, sleeping less. All this will affect your what? Mental health. So mental health is a much, much wider term. Because of lack of understanding of mental term, we only think that when there is a severe problem. Okay, in, if you are from Hyderabad, there is a running joke, Eragadda. That is National Institute of Mental Health. Okay, so if, if there is some problem with somebody, or a isko eragada based though, that means this person has some issue. So we had made fun out of depression, lack of sleep, and all these things. It's very quite common to blame people, but because of all these things, mental health has been stigmatized. Yes or no? Mental health has been what? Stigmatized. What is the stigma? That means if your friend is coming to the hostel every day, sitting and crying. Instead of talking to that person or if instead of understanding that person, we will name that person as depressed person or raw poet or something. We will label them and we will consider a stay away from such people. Right? This is a severe problem in the country because most of us don't understand. And obviously, as UPSCSA this time has mentioned, men have expectations. You cannot cry. You should not share your problems with others or whatever. So all these things will accelerate and affect your quality of life. Every single thing affects your quality of life. This is accelerated especially in informal sector. In informal sector, what happens? 90% of the population in India are in informal sector that means you are working as a waiter or a roti wala or something you broke a glass okay you are now scared that your owner will remove you because of lack of job security because of lack of alternative employment because of lack of skills or because of your geographic conditions for example your mother father are also working in the same area you cannot find employment outside this area so you have you are forced to work there. So because of your social, political, economic conditions, poverty, unemployment, all these things will only accelerate your mental health issues. Thanks to unfortunate events like COVID, our poverty and employment has increased. It's a simple story. Now imagine you are a happy person. You are an auto driver. You have two kids and you took a loan for the auto. You took the loan from a middleman, not from the bank. Okay. Suddenly during rainy season in Hyderabad, you develop a dengue. Okay, for 10 days you are unable to work. Okay, not only that, the hospital bill went up to 25,000. You have borrowed some loan from your auto owner only, the same state or somebody. Now you have to pay money for your health. You have to pay money for your auto. Okay, you have to pay the rent, no? Uh, the loan, interest and all these things. You have went into debt. Now your family is in debt. 
yes or no dbt debt uh, now what will happen to your family's mental health or your mental health it will only deteriorate yes or no this is what she is talking about she is talking about mental health issues especially in the sector of informal worker and informal worker is a person who do not have social security net let's imagine now that he had insurance what would have happened if he had health insurance probably hospital bills would be less then in, in india we have around 60% of out of pocket expenditure that means hospital is free government hospital but medicines you have to purchase you cannot totally rely on the government hospital for diagnostics and all these things for quicker response you need to go to private sector so anyhow my health will be affected that will also push me into poverty that will also add my mental health issues now add dimensions like gender differently able to do this mental health issues will only accelerate yes or no clear yes so yesterday nobel prize for economics a, uh, a woman has won right it's not about stereotyping but she won on what gender wage gap or why uh, there is a gap between women and uh, men female labor force participation ratio and all these things so there also you can clearly see the child or the uh, having a baby actually affects the woman more right so everywhere we go if you are a woman if you are a informal worker if you are having debt if you are having unemployment if you are having job stress your mental health will be severely affected so what should we do as a society so as a society we are supposed to have some solutions what are the solutions community based care and people centered recovery right and human rights oriented care that means whether it is senior citizens women informal workers or whatever what do, what should we do we should have somebody to talk to is yes it no first of all we should have somebody to talk to if you don't allow people to talk what will happen the pent up frustrations will lead to uh suicide attempts and other unfortunate things so the better thing to do is talk to people that should come from community and even companies policies all this thing should be very favorable to the informal workers see at, at the end of the day we are all human beings first is yes it no we should give and expect better quality of life so if we don't have human centric approach then there is a problem with the system so that is the crux of this article okay right now for the fun fun part right so i keep telling my students to write letters to the editor because it will develop your articulation skills okay so if you look at mr venkat subramanian okay he had a very nice line he 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 throwed a bullet at the bjp government right the ruling regime's policy of maintaining silence during domestic troubles would have been better choice even in the international conflict he is saying you know instead of talking something about israel irrelevantly whatever you do normally you stay silent why don't you follow the same policy see that is the beauty of sarcasm and writing right if you understand the context you will appreciate it more right and the letter next to it is written by a school kid uh, i mean a teenager and she quotes wordsworth who is wordsworth a great poet okay wordsworth right you you understand right these things these are the things that will make you a good essay writer first of all we don't even know there is a person called as wordsworth yes and what is she quoting and much it grieved my heart to think what man has made of man yes or no right so the the heart of the reader is in pain why i forced you to become the villain and you forced me to become the villain we forced each other to become the villains okay so you can start your essays or ethics answers with quotes where will you pick up sometimes you can pick them up from letters to the editor also if not you can read and you can write the letters to the editor it will develop your articulation skills okay next hmm 
in 2014 there was a essay topic i told you will india ever win 50 olympic gold medals that was the topic given in 2014 so khelo india sports india and so many other government schemes have been launched and this is the highest ever medal tally in asian games for india that is 107 medals the numbers are irrelevant but the concept here is we should be very happy that we are winning medals in so many areas for example one of the special events is in table tennis a, cup, uh, a pair has defeated china okay it's like china defeating india in cricket it's that rare just imagine tomorrow somebody uh, you know uh, some chinese cricket team came and defeated uh, the strong indian team will it happen that is something that we cannot even imagine because china is not even famous for cricket in table tennis is such a forte for china we went there and we defeated the team and we won the medals so in some departments we are doing fantastically well but hindu being typical hindu he it cites very nice data what is the data so out of the 28 golds only 12 have come from the events of olympics that means 16 events we are winning gold medals but th th those games are not even there in olympics so we should focus on what olympic medals that is a criticism we should be happy as an indian that we won 107 gold medals but at the same time we should also be worried that we are not winning olympic medals in the right areas so what should you do you should work even more harder why you have to win medals in olympics typical parent attitude no yes that is what hindu is trying to tell okay so hindu says a lot more needs to be done to bridge the gap with global standards that is true that is 100% true we are not giving 100% to our uh, sport sportmen right we are not giving them infrastructure we are not giving them proper coaches we are not giving them enough funds once somebody becomes popular we celebrate them okay but you have to celebrate them before they become celebrities that is when they will become actual celebrities i hope you understand see 1.4 billion population is there we can find so many people with so much talent that anybody we can almost beat any other country in any game but we don't have that enough sports infrastructure at the same time we have other issues like doping right and uh, recently we have seen that wrestling association sexual harassment case bridge bhushan case in delhi right so all these infrastructural policy and uh, structural issues have to be removed so that india will become what a sporting powerhouse a sporting powerhouse right first of all above all what should go away sports and politics should go away there is a very strong influence by politicians in the sports that should go away okay there used to be a person called as suresh kalmadi during congress time when the congress was in power and congress coalitions were in power few years ago 10 years ago uh, he was the indian olympic association chair okay there was a very popular quote by pt usha all of you know pt usha right the runner she made a statement i think pt usha only if suresh kalmadi can tell me how many hurdles will be there in a 100 meter hurdle relay okay i will never uh, participate in sports events again you understand right the person who is heading the olympic association he doesn't even know what is a track event how many hurdles will be there in a relay event or and all those things from, but still from 20 years he is the head of olympic association when you when you when you make sports as a political appointments how will they win yes or no who has to head the sports authorities people who have understanding or people who come from sports background they will probably understand the problems better but if you are appoint a retired ias officer or a political appointee they will treat it as one more political seat rather than development check the india movie have you seen the one of the perfect examples for the depiction check the india movie women cannot go and win the medals with such attitude they won't even try slowly slowly things are changing we are better but we we can be even better that is what hindu is saying so people criticize hindu for being you know left uh, counter to government and all these things you can never satisfy hindu but there are some valid points in hindu all the time yes or no at the same time we sometimes it will be sheepish and i have to criticize my job is criticize i will criticize such articles you can remove but genuine articles you can remember 
ओके नेक्स्ट हाँ सो अपर गुप्ता इज फाउंडर डायरेक्टर ऑफ इंटरनेट फ्रीडम फाउंडेशन सो वी आल नो द मीडिया केसेस दट आर हैपनिंग राइट चिल्लिंग इफेक्ट now he brings in a very different angle to the same uh, discussion that is right to privacy of the journalists okay right to privacy is a fundamental right guaranteed in puttaswami versus union of india case in 2017 what is privacy privacy is my own right there is actually no equivalent term to privacy in any indian language so we don't have alternative privacy is privacy privacy is you not knowing about me the things i don't want you to know okay in simple terms that is privacy for example my google map can tell you where i have been okay do i want you to know that no okay or for example my google, my google photos will tell me the photos that i and my wife will probably share with each other right okay do i want you to see them if if i upload it in facebook that's my choice okay but if i'm keeping it in my personal folder that is purely my privacy right or the phone calls i make who am i talking to what am i talking to all these things are privacy okay the thing is in india we have very less respect for privacy we have very less respect for privacy especially the law and order forces have not been properly sensitized to respect privacy the most famous case in this article has it has also been mentioned for example there is an area called as double pura in hyderabad okay very close to the old city and all those things that area has been accused of a drug smuggling network ganja in that area ganja is easily found this is a information that police people have got okay what have they done they have done something called as cordon search that means they have sent police officers from every dimension early morning 7 pm sorry 7 am you are walking on the streets they have stopped you and they have taken your mobile phone and they have started searching your whatsapp messages for what the terms like drugs or ganja okay that is a proper violation of my right to privacy yes or no do you have a warrant no do you have the authority to check my phone no okay this event has actually triggered a very strong response from one individual he is also from hyderabad he is fighting the telangana government in courts and other places to protect his fundamental rights he was a innocent person he was walking and his phone was snatched away as an education educated person he was offended are how can you take my phone right the law normally says if you have to prove that somebody is criminal develop a case around him convince the court that all the important evidence is in his mobile phone then you will have the right to search his mobile okay this is not followed and unfortunately even the judiciary also doesn't believe in this right so what he is arguing is as a country we should wake up okay and protect the right to privacy right now the other side of the coin what is the other side of the coin you are the police officer you know that he is a drug smuggler 100% information i have okay all of you have told me behind him behind, behind his back okay but i don't actually have the proof what can i do what can i do i have to keep him under observation okay i have to keep him under the observation 24 by 7 day and night i have to follow him physically one day while he is doing the smuggling and all those things probably red handed i will catch him but he has seen some hollywood movies he is very smart like the italian mafia and all those things what will he do he will ask his subordinate okay to do all the drug dealing his subordinate will give orders to his subordinate like this 10 people are there in the list will you ever be able to arrest him directly why first i have to catch the 10th person 10th person has to confess the name of the 9th 9th to 8th 8th la 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 last last he has to come to the subordinate then the subordinate also has to confess that yes he is the mastermind he is the kingpin then probably i will arrest him the other way is directly take his phone find the evidence and arrest him which is easy for me 
<laughs> you understand the problem? If you are a police officer, you will say, you know, all this is utter nonsense. There is no such thing as right to privacy and all these things. Right to privacy is for who? People who follow laws, not the law breakers. But how did you come to know that I am a law breaker? Only after you break the law. <laughs> you understand, right? So if, if, see, to catch a law breaker, who is breaking the law? The police are breaking the law. That is an unfortunate scenario. This is where we call as state capacity has to be improved. We have to improve what? State's capacity. Got my point? Yeah. So, in his arguments, yes, there are genuine points. We have to respect them, heed them. For example, to protect their rights. He says, if we allow the same things to, if we say, if we allow the same things to happen, okay, we will establish a trend called as digital authoritarianism. What is that? Digital authoritarianism. That means the state will have unlimited right over your information. It can address anybody. It can ask the phones to be seen, etc., etc., etc. Okay. Right. Now. As a class, anyhow, you are going to polity, polity, right? Okay, I want you to remember this name, Hans Raj Khanna, H.R. Khanna's descent. Okay, it's a legendary descent. Uh, descent what is descent? Descent means saying no. There are five judges in a bench, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, four of them said, yes, whatever is being done by Indira Gandhi is correct. But one person said it is wrong. It is not because of Indira Gandhi. It is because logically it is wrong. In simple sense, to understand the case is ADM Jabalpur case. The case we are talking about is ADM Jabalpur case. In the beginning of the article also he mentions it is a case related to emergency habeas corpus article 21 and 226. You don't need to know the details, but simply understand four people in the bench say it's okay for the police officers to arrest during emergency, nothing will happen. But one person says, no matter when you arrest, emergency or not, okay, right to life, that is the 21 and basic dignity, that will that will not go away. Yes or no? Basic human rights cannot be taken away. That one person is whom? Mr. H.R. Khanna. That, that descent is very, very famous descent. Okay. The thing is, in 2017, during the Puttaswami case, that Jabalpur case has been overwritten. Right? It took India a good amount of time to overwrite the Jabalpur case. So, after fighting all these things, we now came to understand the importance of privacy. We have to protect and respect it. That is from the perspective of Mr. Upper Gupta. Okay? So one day you will understand what is the speciality of H.R. Kanna's descent because out of the five members of that bench, except him, the remaining four went on to become the chief justices of the country. Okay, He has been superseded. He resigned in protest and all those things. So the power of descent. Right? And you can also learn some political history. For example, Y.V. Chandrachud, that is Justice Chandrachud's father was also one of the members in that board. And one of the members in the Puttaswami judgment was Justice Chandrachud. Technically speaking, the son has overridden the father's judgment. So, like this, not useful for UPSA. I'm just letting you know. Okay. Clear? Yes. Hope you understood the class today. Any questions? Right. We'll see some questions from online. Information will not be shared without my consent is privacy. Hmm. Okay. Yes, please. Do one thing, Supraja. You can message me in person. No, I will. I will. 
if it's important i will discuss tomorrow in the class or else i will let, just let you know on on individual basis any other questions from the class reading paper skipping it evening that is an assumption that i have to make that you people are reading newspaper tomorrow she will take the class we will see how much paper she has read yes one article one day one one person so i will know whether you are reading the papers or not tomorrow decide which article you want to discuss and tell me right yes day after tomorrow you so one day one one person right thank you see you all tomorrow